I remember a couple of years ago, I was getting my hair cut in a barber's in Abbey Field, actually. And uh, as I was sitting there, this man walked in with three blondy haired sons who had curls like Curly Sue. What was that, her name? Whatever, whatever that. Anyway, really like Annie out of Annie. <laughs> All right? Just really kind of big mop of curly hair. And, uh, and, you know, they were supposed to be obviously each, only one was getting the haircut at the time. In the meantime, the others were running around and taking hair souvenirs and trying to burn it or whatever it was. And, and the father was there, lads, he's like, lads, look, this was November, it must be November. And he said, lads, would you just, look, sit down, sit down, sit, down, sit, down, sit you, you too, sit, sit, you, sit, sit, sit. And he said, lads, sit down or you're getting coal for Christmas. And the lads went, coal? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just... I, I, I found it hilarious, actually, as I was watching this whole spectacle, you know? And it's like these lads, they'd be happy to play with anything. Anything. You know, mud, dirt, hair, bits of a brush, each other's foot, feet, you know, anything. Anything. They could play with anything. And it's interesting how when you're kind of at peace with yourself, you know, when you're, when you're happy within yourself, you can be happy with anything. And you can be happy with nothing. When you're not at peace within yourself, you will not be happy with anything and you will always feel like you've nothing. It's just very interesting like, how, how it works. Can we see today, like, we've never, in living memory, we have never been as affluent as we are in Ireland now. We've never had things so easy, right? Every single one of your houses has indoor plumbing. Right? There's a lot of your grandparents who will remember a time when the toilet was a separate little room, an outhouse, which we, we won't even talk about the number of spiders that were in there. Lee. <laughs> right? Spiders and rats and absolutely... Right? And that was normal. I remember it was down my, my summer holidays there, a um, place down in Cork, and the, the owner of the house was telling me that he remembers in the 60s when they got electricity... Imagine, imagine actually living, now, that's just not, that, not just Wi-Fi, that means no lights. I, I, you know, once the sun goes down, and in winter, of course, that's about half four, it's like you're trim, trimming your lantern, right? Light, your light comes from this, and once the candles or the oil is gone, it's pitch dark. You wouldn't see your hand in front of your face until the sun comes up, every day. That's within living memory, okay? So we've never had things as comfortable, we've never had things as easy. A selection of channels, you don't even have to wait for a channel, it's going straight to YouTube, Look, watch whatever you want. Whatever. It's never been so easy. So why are we so empty? Why? It, just, it makes no sense. Well, it makes no sense if we think that the more stuff we have, the happier we are. Because then if we have all of this stuff, and mail order, clothes, and all sorts of stuff, we've just rooms full of stuff that we have to actually now tidy because we have so much stuff. Uh, why, aren't, why isn't our happiness increasing proportionally? Why isn't all of this stuff actually making us happy? And why is it that you could go to a, 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 a poorer country where they have a little ball made up of a roll of clothes with string around it and a big beaming smile to them as they kick that yoke around the place on a dusty field? They're not supposed to be happy because they haven't got money. And we're supposed to be happy because we've got money. It doesn't work. Because it, it, it's, it's not it really, it's, no matter how, we're, we're told this a million times, and uh, I don't know how long it'll, it'll take, how many times we have to hear it before we actually believe it. But money doesn't make us happy. And comfort doesn't actually make us happy either. I know we all, we all like uh, hot chocolate in the evening with our feet up in front of a roaring fire, checking out your Facebook yogis. Uh, that it's, it, that it's, it's comfortable, it's nice, it's not, it's not bad. It's not, it's, there's nothing wrong with it. But why is it, though, that all of those things do not, in the end, do not satisfy us? We heard in the beginning of our reading today from the God who is, who was, and who is to come. It's, 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 it's a short little expression, but when we talk about God, it's, like he, it's, it's not that he, he was from the beginning, it's he simply always was. He is being itself, and he always will be. 
And our goal then, uh, this, this innate desire in our hearts, this insatiable desire in our hearts, is to be with him. The only thing that can satisfy, the only thing that, that can actually like, fill that gap is God himself. And we can try everything and anything else, but it will not work. It will not work. There are even like, stories of, of uh, people who wanted certain healings, and they didn't get the healing that they were praying for. So they were left with this, uh, with this discomfort and this, this pain, whatever it may be. And only towards the end, uh, end of their lives, they realized how that cross had kept them so close to the Lord, or that cross had prevented them from sinning, or that cross had kept them humble, how that cross had prepared them for heaven. And while the cross is always a cross, it's, all, it's, it, it doesn't, it's not, we would never wish it on anyone. When we discover that, that God is enough, there is no greater treasure. There is no greater treasure. Because today, I, I learned a word, a new word last year. I learned lots of new words here. Um, most of them have to do with makeup, contours, lines. Did I get that right? Zones, right? Yeah. And um, yeah, unibrow, it's another word I learned. <laughs> okay. But um, one of the words I learned was the word meh. M-E-H, I presume it's spelt, right? And that's like this kind of attitude of indifference. It's kind of this, this complete lack of fight. Do you know? And it's, it's, a really kind of a, it's a really kind of a sad attitude to have. It's, not, it's, not, it's just not worth fighting. It's not worth trying to change. It's just, it's just, just what it is. You know, and it's like, again, it's like this, this, this amazing apathy, this amazing indifference to the situation. Meh. So what can you do? Put on my pajamas, I suppose. <laughs> and just, you know, it's just this apathy and lethargy and just... And such, again, like in, in, in this, that, dare I say, that expression tends to be used amongst young people, those who should be full of life and full of beans and be the instruments of change, want to go out there and change the world. <sighs> Meh. Something's like work. We could fail. It's better not to try. You know, uh, it's it's very very interesting. I think, like this 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 world that we live in, with, with everything being so immediate, and and we want to, want, wanting to satisfy our desires so immediately, it takes it takes the fight out of us. Because it's just yeah, it's just easier. Just find the easiest way. Yeah, you have an assignment to do. Google it. Yeah, that's more or less my assignment. Copy. Paste, Father Patrick Cal, send. <laughs> you know, like, it, 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 takes, it takes the fight out of us. And the same can happen in our faith, where it's just uh, this kind of indifference. It feels like work, or I don't know. Do I have to? Do I have to? It, 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 it's a very interesting story in, uh, in the Old Testament there, where... Uh, so Isaac's son, Jacob, right? Jacob has an older brother, Esau. And traditionally, the inheritance would have been given to the older son. So in Isaac's case, he would have had to give his, 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 uh, all of the inheritance to Esau. And Jacob is eating on one particular occasion we don't really know what it is. It looks like a kind of an oatmeal kind of a soup thing, right? It looks like maybe a tomato soup or something. Scripture describes it as soup, but it's kind of this red meal, okay? And Esau comes in. He's a big lad. And he says, give me some of that, <laughs> more or less. And Jacob says to him, um, I'll give it to you if you give me your birthright. And Esau says, Grand, yeah? It's, it's like, this, is, this, is, this is scripture, right? Esau gives away his birthright, his inheritance, for a bowl of soup. <laughs> it's like this actually happened. And then when it, when it comes about, like, Jacob then inherits it all. So, yeah, grand, whatever. It doesn't make any difference anyway. Do you know, but like, and then when, when, when we have this attitude then towards, towards the Mass or towards the Eucharist, we're very much tempted towards that at the moment, um, just to look at these things of, of such a sacred nature and say, yeah, sure, yeah. 
Does it really? Does it really matter? Like, does it really matter? We're good people anyway, you know. And season of goodwill coming up. That's what's important. That we're good to each other. So I mean, do we have to kind of do anything? Do we have to? Do we need the Lord? Like, I mean, it's not just enough to be good. It's not, all this mass thing, prayer thing. It all sounds like work. It all. I don't know. You know, it's just the life just seeps out of us, and we forget that if we have everything and do not have the Lord, we have nothing. And that if we do not have the Lord, we will never be entirely happy. Never. Because we have been created for him, not just created by him, created for him, created to live in him, created to be dwelled in by him. And so nothing else is going to satisfy that. Nothing ever Phrase all that positively, Father Patrick. With the Lord, we have everything we need. Even if we lack exterior things, we lack wealth and lack, even lack health. Precious and all as it is. If we have the Lord, we have everything we need. I know that those words are very easy to say. And if you're in a, a situation of great poverty or illness, they're still true. They're just a lot harder to say, those words. If we have the Lord, we have everything. If not, heaven is not enough for you. If it's not enough to have God, then heaven is not enough for you. Because that's what heaven is. It's living in God. God being our everything. God being our all in all. So we ask the good Lord today to renew our faith in him. That when he seems to be far away or when he seems uh, somewhat distant, that we, like the blind man in Jericho, that we call out to him. And if he doesn't answer, we call out all the louder. We do not give up. And then as, as a blind man, it would have been plain obvious the man was blind. He would have, wouldn't have known exactly where to look because he wouldn't have known exactly where Jesus was until someone turned him the right direction. Or maybe when he heard his voice, he'd know more or less where he is, but he wouldn't be able to look you in the face because he might know exactly where the face is. It was plain obvious he was blind. And Jesus says to him, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do? Because maybe, maybe the most important thing in his heart wasn't eyesight what do you want me to do for you sir he replied let me see again we pray for this gift of sight but of, of sight for the divine things for each one of us for our whole catholic church for our church leaders that we may see these divine things as our greatest treasures that we may see the good Lord as our greatest and ultimately only source of happiness. Amen. Amen.